Africa, the birthplace of humanity. A continent gorged with beautiful cultures and people, incredible landscapes, as well as majestic animals. I built an African wildlife zoo in Minecraft. Elephants, giraffes, hippos, and even meerkats. We will see them all. I've decided to make a small change compared to my usual videos. Basically, the animals that will be in the zoo are either injured, sick, or have a natural reason for me to be stealing them from the wild because, yes, this is not a very good thing to do. And guess what? Once the animals are well and healed, they will be released back into the African wilderness. On day one, I had just landed in Africa. I looked around and spotted a lion and some zebras, and then I saw I had a guidebook in my hand, so I used it to cut some trees. I think that's what it was meant for. I crafted myself a pickaxe and got some stone, and then I realized I was truly in the wilderness because some lions were attacking a poor zebra. I watched and really hoped that the zebra would win, I don't know why, but sadly, he didn't make it. I continued on my way and found a little cave opening where I collected a bit of coal and then I luckily found a village in the evening to spend the night. To pass the time I decided to go mining and I collected plenty of coal and iron. On day two I went into another village house and I stole all the books and you could see that the villager was so mad at me. I also visited the forge and stole the armor from the chests. I went out to explore a bit and I spotted loads of nice little plants that I gathered and then I came a bit too close to some rhinos and one of them really wasn't happy with me. That night I returned to the safety of the village and went mining once again. And luckily so because soon enough I came across some diamonds. But after that, luck was still on my side because I continued mining for a little while in the same exact line and soon enough I came upon yet another vein of diamonds. I'm sure you can imagine my excitement of having quite a few diamonds on barely day two. On the morning of day three, I came back up and I realized that a few villagers had gotten killed by some zombies and I fought off a few monsters that were around the place. Further off, I actually spotted a herd of zebras as well as some lovely meerkats. Some zoologists actually think that zebras use their stripes as camouflage when they're together in a big group to confuse predators. I then went around the place collecting the plants I could find and then I spotted a desert village. So I started off my village raid by taking all the crops, then I went into a house and stole all the books because yeah, I'm just a mean person. <laughs> and then I of course looted the village chest. I then spotted another meerkat in the grass and also collected basically what was dried bamboo, but that still grew. So yeah, I decided to plant it. I didn't know what it would be good for. That night I went back mining and I heard so many zombie noises, so I dug up and soon enough I found a zombie spawner. I really needed to get some string to be able to make a bed and thankfully there was a little bit in the chest. But still there was far from enough string so I decided to kill off as many spiders as I could. With all the string I had collected, I made myself a bed as well as an animal net. I captured a poor innocent meerkat and I promised myself after that that I would find a proper reason for taking the animals from the wild because it would be nicer as a storyline if there was an actual purpose for everything I do, even though it is just a game. On day five, I spotted so many majestic animals such as hippos, giraffes, crown cranes, and even a donkey. It was actually really funny to see all the African animals from the mod together with the basic squarish animals from Minecraft. 
I did find another village and stole everything, but shh, don't tell anyone. And on day six, I found a bunch of chickens and I decided I would actually bring them all home. I put them all in the pen next to Louis, the meerkat. I then used a poisonous potato and some feathers to make some tranquilizer darts. Throughout the entire afternoon, I chopped down a bunch of trees and I also killed off some monsters in the night. If you hadn't noticed, basically the village had been taken over by a lion pride and I spotted this rhino that had kind of lost his way and he looked pretty old, so for his own safety I decided to capture him. Just outside the village I also spotted another rhino that seemed to be limping or had either fallen or gotten into a fight with someone, so I also decided to take her. By the way, every single animal I will capture in this video will be released eventually. When I arrived back to the village, I realized that all the chickens and Lewis had escaped their cage because basically the villagers could actually break things and build things, so I expect they had a little go at the enclosure. On day 9, I had finished building the rhino enclosure, so I tried to make it relatively big even though I didn't have much wood on me, and I made sure that there was some shade as well as some water and grass, and I also decided to release Lewis in this enclosure as well. I gave the rhinos some kibble and managed to tame them so that their stay would be a little bit more agreeable and stress-free. I crafted them some enrichment balls and I also made sure they had plenty of food. The rhinos loved wheat and of course they ate loads of it, so I had to enlarge all the village farms. On day 11 I noticed that all the trees had grown so I chopped them down and tried to collect as many apples as possible because I would be needing loads to make kibble. At one point, some more rhinos were trying to get in the enclosure, probably because there was loads of nice food and they wanted to get to it, but they weren't sick or injured, so I kindly pushed them out. I then made some frog kibble for Lewis. Yes, you have to make frog kibble for meerkats for some reason. I then realized that meerkats love worms as well as sugar, so I didn't have any worms on me, so I collected loads of sugar cane and transformed it into sugar, and it doesn't really sound like a very healthy diet. I decided to name the old rhino Clint Eastwood and the injured one Rocky. I soon realized that when I clicked on their feeder with a certain block, the feeder actually looked like the block I was holding. I went out into the desert to find some more sugar sugar cane for Lewis and I spotted this poor baby elephant that was hurting so bad on a cactus so I decided to take him in my care. On day 14 I spotted a desert temple so of course I disarmed the explosives and looted all the chests and I was really happy to find loads of string which meant that I could actually get the entire family with the poor baby elephant because just taking a baby from the wild without the mother and the siblings is just way too cruel. On day 15 I was collecting some fences for the elephant enclosure and I realized that this villager kept placing a fence as soon as I broke it so yeah infinite fence farm I guess. Once the enclosure was done I started placing some nice little plants as well as some bushes and a feeder and soon enough the elephants would enter their temporary home. On day 17 I decided to craft an enchanting table because after all I had stolen every single book there was in this world so you know I had just plenty to make bookshelves. So yeah now all I needed was levels. So of course I went down to get some obsidian and I actually found some diamonds again. I was so lucky and I also spotted that creeper so yeah. I carefully killed it and then I went to explore the cave in the hopes of maybe getting some lapis lazuli because yeah you cannot enchant without. You could actually call me the Tootsie Terror because trust me there were no monsters left when I was done with that cave. I actually didn't find any lapis but then when I went back mining again I actually found some pretty easily. To motivate myself for farming levels, I decided to have a look if there were any interesting enchantments such as Silk Touch and Fortune. I then released the elephant family in their enclosure and left them some space so that they could slowly wake up. 
I try to tame the mother with some kibble and really she did not want to be tamed. Suddenly I got a fright because Rocky was really not doing well and basically she had eaten all her wheat so quickly so I quickly got her some wheat and she was alright in the end. Keeping your tamed animals alive in this mod is really tricky, especially like when you're exploring caves and all because the animals really run out of food super quickly. On day 23, I made an enclosure for the wildest African animals there ever was, chickens. I went back to my enchanting table and I did a bit of enchanting, you know, just low level ones to refresh the enchantments and finally I got Silk Touch. The only problem was that I was at level 18. Yes, so I wasn't gonna go very far. As killing zombies at the zombie spawner was too slow, I decided to finally collect obsidian and hop into the nether. And I actually spawned right next to a nether fortress, but I wasn't here for killing blazes. I was here to collect as much quartz as possible. Well, not that I actually cared about the quartz at the moment. It was just for the levels. On day 27, I enchanted my pickaxe with silk touch. And I also decided to make the rhino enclosure a bit bigger, you know. It's always important for the animals to have plenty of space. On day 28, I collected plenty more apples and I was able to make some more kibble and have another go trying to tame the mother. And this time I actually managed to tame her immediately. I was really happy to see that elephants actually ate leaves so it would be much easier to get loads of leaves because there are just trees everywhere. On day 29, I collected a bunch of wheat and basically did some farming. And then I actually tamed the baby that was hurting in the cactus so that I would make sure that he would recover well. I made the decision not to tame the other two elephants because I wanted them to keep the sort of wild side to them as much as possible. And also because making kibble required so many apples and by cutting down 30 trees I got like 3 apples so yeah that was really complicated. So this might sound a bit silly but basically both elephants had a pond of water right next to them but they weren't drinking so I tried to terraform a bit to make it easier easier for them to go down. With the quartz I had collected, I decided why not outline the enclosures to make it look a bit nicer, you know, so I made plenty of quartz slabs and I also got kicked by a wild zebra that I had actually gotten into the elephant enclosure. I fed my chickens and I magically collected some feathers <laughs> to make some darts and, of course, very important, I went to add some food in all of the animals' feeders. On day 32, I decided to go exploring and I found this huge crack in the ground and then suddenly I heard a poacher shooting at me and then he started shooting at a poor zebra so I got really angry and I decided to kill him because nobody likes poachers, honestly. I captured the zebra in a net because it had been shot at and I really needed to take care of the injury. I love how I'm just pretending I'm a vet even though I do not know anything about healing a bullet wound. From days 33 to 37, I actually discovered a mine shaft. So of course I had to go in it. I was really hoping I would find maybe some name tags in one of the chests. Instead, I came across a bunch of monsters, but I was quite happy because I collected a lot of resources such as coal and iron. And in the chests, I did not find any name tags, but I did find two chests that were like really close to each other. And it had just the basic loot such as iron and rails and whatever. I was fighting a few cave spiders from time to time, but it was mainly okay. I then found a vein of lapis azuli and I dug it out. And guess what? There were actually some diamonds hidden behind it. And then catastrophe struck. Basically, a bunch of cave spiders were jumping out of nowhere and attacking me. You know, when it's just one or two, it's okay. But I soon realized there was actually a spawner right above me and I was left with half a heart. So yes, I went in my hole, the typical Tootsie hole, you know, <laughs> to regain my health. Honestly, I cannot believe I didn't die. 
After that, I collected some more lapis lazuli, found another chest without any name tags, and then it was time to head back up to the surface. On day 38, I went to see all the animals to make sure they were okay, and then with the diamonds I'd found, I decided to repair some of my tools. It was time for me to make an enclosure for the zebra, so of course, very important, I obviously had a pond in the enclosure, and once again, I tried to make the enclosure relatively large. On day 39, I realized that both the elephants were really struggling to get to the water that was right next to them, so that was a bit confusing, and I had to make them follow me so that they would drink, and I decided to make a second pond just in case. I then decided to take the zebra that had gotten in with the elephants and put him with the zebra that had been injured. I was really hoping they would keep each other company and this way heal quicker. By the way, I forgot to give you the names of the elephants, so the baby is of course Dumbo and the mother is Ella. On day 40, Ella and I decided to go exploring. While I was waiting for Ella to wake up, I decided to capture the sheep because I knew that I would be needing a bit of wool in the future. I made sure to feed Ella and then we made the short journey home. I then released the sheep in the African chicken enclosure and I fed all the African chickens. <laughs> I then checked on the zebras and I know it does not make sense just to put a wounded zebra in an enclosure for him to heal, <laughs> but I will be actually building a vet center soon enough, so I will then be able to heal all the animals in it. On day 31, I continued working on all the paths and I removed, you know, all the grass. And I really think that just adding paths around the enclosure just makes it look so much more like neat in a way. From days 42 to 43, I went mining once again for quartz in the nether. Once I got 30 levels, I went back into the overworld and I enchanted my pickaxe with fortune 3. So yeah, if you remember, I said earlier on that I was really hoping that fortune would work on leaves for getting more apples. And guess what? It does work, but only with saplings. Like I got a sapling every two, three leaves I broke, but no apples. So yeah, I don't think I was gonna tame many animals <laughs> in this video. I know you might think it's out of laziness and all. I'm not, you know, getting apples, but really I would be spending the entire video just chopping down trees because to make kibble, like one kibble, you need two apples and you need at least four or five to tame an animal. So yeah, that's just a lot of apples. And yeah, we do not have time for that in a hundred days. On day 45, I spotted a rhino that had gotten in the zebra enclosure. I don't know why all the animals want to go in the enclosure, but oh well. So I carefully took him out. I then hopped back on to Ella's back and basically we went out to have a look at the different species and there was this adorable little hippo, it was really cute. But to be honest, I was actually looking for villagers because sometimes in the chest you get like a good bunch of apples. I was really, really hoping on that. Sadly, when we were almost at a village, we spotted two poachers killing hippos. It was really horrible. Of course, I got super mad and I just killed them because who cares about poachers? And I decided to get the two hippos that had been hurt. Hopefully they would survive. To stay cool in the African heat, hippos spend most of their days in rivers and lakes because basically their eyes, nose and ears are located on the top of their head, which means they can see and breathe whilst being submerged in water. After this annoying and emotional moment, I went over to the village and discovered there was actually a desert temple nearby, so of course I went to loot the chests. On day 47, Ella was getting quite thirsty, so we had a little bath in the river and she really, really enjoyed it. I was delighted to come across a bunch of okapis. 
Sadly, I spotted one of the babies that had fallen in a lake. So I quickly, you know, helped him to get out, but he went in the opposite direction than his mum. So I tried scaring the mum towards the baby, you know, so they would be reunited because the baby would never survive on his own. And I just didn't manage. So I decided to get them all together and let them grow up in a safe environment. Okay, some of my explanations are so bad. <laughs> On day 48, I went to Ella's back and like we both took like a ton of damage. I do not know what happened. So I quickly healed her and I guess it was all okay. I don't really know what happened. Of course, Dumbo couldn't drink from the pond that was right next to her. I do not know why. So yeah, I put a saddle on Dumbo and made her drink by force almost. I then spotted a lion that had fallen in the village well that probably had swallowed in a lot of water. So I built him a nice and cozy enclosure so that he could kind of get back to his senses, you know, cause he was clearly not feeling good. On day 49, I started building the Okapi enclosure. It was actually the biggest enclosure yet because I had collected a lot of wood trying to get apples so yeah, I could make as many fences as I desired. I even left like an immense portion of the river that was passing through so that they would have no excuse for not drinking. And I also removed a random zebra and a rhino that had popped in the enclosure somehow. Well, after all, I am building a zoo in their natural habitat. I am just a horrible person ruining their lives, so <laughs> I really can't blame them. It's terrible because as I'm trying to make things seem okay for the animals, I'm realizing that what I'm doing is not at all okay. <laughs> Even though it's a game, I feel super bad. <laughs> On day 51, I started making the lion enclosure and I was trying my best not to let the rhino in the enclosure. He really wanted to. <laughs> and then I placed down the lion and he was just snoozing and getting his energy back after, you know, all that swimming in the well. On day 52, I went back into the nether to get a bunch of quartz as well as levels. I was really quite happy because I got silk touch on my shovel which meant I could get as much grass as possible and it would be super easy to feed the rhinos. I then continued making the enclosure outline with some quartz. On day 54 the elephant enclosure was done and I started doing the rhino and cute meerkat enclosure. And I was actually wondering if my fortune three was working because you really need like a lot of quartz to just make like one outline. On day 55, I went out once again with Ella and basically we were trying to find as many little nice plants, you know, the unique ones to put in all the enclosures. I then spotted a couple of cranes as well as their grown up baby and one of them was limping really bad. So I decided to take the entire family because if you didn't know, basically crown cranes are actually monogamous animals. And actually in some countries, cranes are the symbol of loyalty because they basically mate for life. On day 56, I came across a desert village and guess what was in the chest? Three diamonds. So yeah, that was definitely a great expedition. On day 57, I woke up next to the lovely hippos and then I decided to repair my shovel because I had been using it quite a bit. I then started working on the crane enclosure and basically it had like a huge pond in the middle. I thought it would be nice for them. I then decided to build a last very large enclosure, even though I had no clue if there would be any animals in it. It was just in case I came across some animals that were being attacked or injured so that they would have immediately a place to stay. You know, I wouldn't have to build it and they would have to wait, etc, etc. I then selected a relatively flat space and then I, you know, covered up all the little ponds and all because I would be building the vet center there. The next morning, I suddenly spotted Dumbo that was not doing well. I got so scared and guess what? He hadn't been drinking yet again. I mean, this is so complicated, this mod. I mean, the animals will just die because they don't drink the water that is next to them. It's just 
way too stressful. Once Dumbo was okay, I went back to my Vet Center build. Basically, as this is 100 days in Africa, I really wanted to use the acacia wood. You know, I didn't want to make something out of oak. So yeah, um, I'm really hoping it's gonna look okay because I literally never build with acacia. I really wanted to have the roof like a nice different color. So I decided to go into the nether and collect loads of quartz once again. At one point, a gas saw that I was getting bored, you know, they're so nice. So he decided to play a bit of tennis with me. And I think I sent the ball back a bit too hard. I'm not sure. I mean, it just disappeared. Oh well. So if you're wondering why on earth is Tootsie putting some quartz like randomly? Well, it is not totally random. Basically, I wanted to do like an animal paw print on the front of a vet because yeah, I don't know, it really didn't look very good. So I thought that could add a bit of cuteness. To be honest, I did struggle quite a bit. Like I had to do the design a hundred times, but finally I was relatively happy with what I had done. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I chose the font for the days, you know, that's in the top left on purpose because in Africa, there are four main fabric patterns used by the different tribes and villages. The individual patterns and process of creation share significant cultural information about each tribe. On day 65, I moved on to the roof and I basically used some slabs. It was, yes, a relatively flat roof. I mean, it's not the most beautiful build I've ever done, but it is for healing animals. So the purpose is what counts more. And to be honest, I kind of did my best with what I had. You know, I wanted just a spacious build where I would be able to put the typical vet markings, you know, the animal paws, basically. By the way, I'm gonna make the most of this building moment. I would like to talk quickly about a tribe, an African tribe that is actually called the Tootsies. And well, it's not written exactly like my channel name, but I think it's important to talk about it. It's part of history. Basically in Rwanda, there was a genocide in 1994 because there were basically two tribes living in the same place. And as it very often is in these terrible cases, the minority got persecuted in this case, the Tutsi tribe. I would just like to pass a message, a simple one, but a very important one. Basically, you have to do your best in life to not have any hatred towards others just because, for example, they're different from you, especially your classmates and all the people that are around you. Well, maybe count out poachers for that. Once the vet center was accomplished, I decided to take my first patient there, Lewis. Well, Lewis wasn't necessarily injured. I just wanted to check how he was doing, you know, before releasing him to the wilderness by the end of the video. So I'm sorry that I'm talking about dark subjects sometimes. I know maybe I shouldn't, but what counts for me is that everyone that's watching all this community, I really would want us to spread kindness to the world and not all these bad things that a lot of humans do. From day 72 to 73, Ella and I went around to try and find another village and I actually came across this funny old man who was actually a botanist and he would sell some plants in exchange from the coins that you would get from killing poachers. By the way, Ella wasn't doing too well, so I decided to take care of her a little bit at the vets so that she would regain her former health. So basically, I went to sleep at the village and when I came back, the botanist had disappeared. Yeah, basically despawned, so I felt a bit silly. And then it was time to do the long and laborious job of making paths literally everywhere. And I know it looks like the zoo isn't too big and all, but trust me, it took ages. And then guess what happened? This annoyed me really bad. One of my rhinos died because, ah, he ate too fast. So immediately I released the other rhino because I mean, this mod is really, really awesome with all the animals, but when you tame them, they die so easily. I mean, yes, maybe I'm just a terrible caretaker, but I was, you know, working on the zoo a lot and I can't just, you know, be next to the rhinos constantly giving them food. So yeah, 
I really feel bad, but yeah, I guess it happens. And thankfully this is a game because, oh gosh, I would be in prison now. <laughs> probably very very miserable especially that rhinos are endangered species that's not very good to see on day 78 i collected some wool as well as some ink sacks and i made myself a car well a sort of truck van whatever <laughs> well i actually called it the tootsie truck and i went on a little trip with the tootsie truck <laughs> So you might be wondering, where is Tootsie off to in her Tootsie truck? Well, basically, I was off to find some clay and as I had silk touch, it was really practical because I wanted to make a build out of terracotta. On my way back home, I came across another bunch of horrid poachers that I, of course, killed instantly. But sadly, they had hurt a giraffe, so I decided to adopt the giraffe just for a few days. And I also took another giraffe, even though she was fine. I guess it was more for company. I then bought the hurt giraffe to the vet so that she would be taken care of and healed. I then started building the terracotta hut. So basically it would be a hut where I store maybe some medicine, some food, etc, etc. All for the animals, of course. On day 81, I continued building the large walls all around the zoo. So basically these walls were especially to keep poachers out. And also because it was nice to kind of see the zoo as a concrete area, you know? And yes, the zoo was quite large and it took me a big bunch of days to finish the wall. After accidentally hitting the lion, I brought him to the vet just for a little checkup and he had really recovered well from the well, <laughs> the village well. Um, and I released him right next to a lovely lioness and I think he lived happily ever after. But that was the only interesting thing that happened because the rest of the time I was building a wall and it's super repetitive, but it had to be done. On day 92, I continued working on the terracotta hut, particularly on the roof. I made it totally out of acacia wood. It does look a bit too orange and like a bit weird, but I guess I've never done a terracotta hut before. So this hut basically represents um, the actual huts that a lot of African tribes live in that are made, you know, with thatch, sticks, mud, etc, etc. Once all that was done, I finished off the floor by shoveling down the grass. I then started making the kind of billboard that would be at the very front of my zoo and basically there would be written zoo on it. It's nothing crazy, but I thought it would be nice to have an entrance even though there would never be any visitors. I had made it square at first and it looked a bit weird, so I made it a little bit more round and tried to connect it in a way that looked all right. I then went to capture Lewis to be able to release him into the wild. So Ella and I tried to find where he was living at in the wild and we released him. On day 95, it was time to release Theocapes. So I put them to sleep so that they wouldn't be too stressed. I did the same with the hippos, with also Rocky the rhino, and with the three cranes. I hadn't written down the coordinates where I got all the animals, and it's a bit silly because I did struggle to find where they lived, but I remembered for the hippos it was near a village, then for the cranes it was near that, you know, little hill, and when I released the cranes I actually came across some ostriches, which was really nice, they looked really cool. And then guess what, I had to lose Ella. Basically, she had run off with another hippo, but I climbed up a cliff and I found her. After all, Ella's character trait is naughty. On day 97, I finally found the home of the Okapis. So yeah, I placed them there and I knew I was right because there was actually another one just wandering about there. I then decided to release Rocky not too far from the zoo because I'd actually found him in the village next to the zoo. On day 98, I captured a rhino that I'd gotten in the zebra enclosure. No idea why he was here. And I also got the zebras 
and I found, you know, the ravine where I'd found them at first and I laid them there in the grass. Now, these two rhinos, they were in the line enclosure. I never put them in there. They just really wanted to be in the enclosure, but yes, they had to go back in the wild. So I decided to put them right outside the zoo, like really close, so that, you know, they were in a place they enjoyed. On day 99, it was time to release the giraffes. It was easy to find where they actually lived because it was right next to the zoo. Very important, I of course did not forget the African chickens and the sheep, of course. I just, you know, made a hole in their enclosure and waited for them to get out if they didn't want to follow me with seeds or wheat. I then captured Dumbo as well as Dumbo's sibling and we were off to release them. But honestly, it was so weird to see the zoo with like no one in it. So I released Dumbo and his siblings, but for me, it was really hard to release Ella because we had lived so many little adventures together, but it had to be done. And the mum had to return to the wild with her children. After that, I returned to the zoo and there was just like one sheep that had randomly went into an enclosure. But after all, animals do not belong in zoos. I mean, if an animal can go back in the wild, like isn't sick, hurt or whatever, and has the capabilities to survive in the wild, it is exactly where he should live. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video and guess what? The next video I will be posting will actually be a 100 days of Ark. So basically, if you don't know that game, Ark is all about taming dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures, as well as surviving and building. So I thought, as it's quite close to Minecraft, it'll probably be very enjoyable, but I guess it is sort of a test and we will see. Fingers crossed you will all like it.